Hi, everyone. Before we get into the episode, I wanted to take a moment to address the Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe versus Wade. This decision stripped away the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Abortion is a basic health care need for the millions of people who become pregnant. Everyone should have the freedom to decide what's best for themselves and their families, including when it comes to ending a pregnancy. This decision has dire consequences for individual health and safety and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. Even if you live in a state where abortion rights are upheld, access to safe medical abortions shouldn't be determined by location, and it shouldn't be the privilege of a small few. You can help by donating to local abortion funds. To find out where to donate for each state, visit donationsforabortions.com. That's the number four. If you or someone you know needs help, or if you want to get more involved, here are five resources. One, Shout Your Abortion is a campaign to normalize abortion. Two, Don't Ban Equality is a campaign for companies to stand against abortion restrictions. Three, Abortion.cafe has information about where to find clinics. Four, PlanCPills.org provides early at-home abortion pills that you can keep in your medicine cabinet. And five, Choice.crd.co has a collection of these resources and more. I encourage you to speak up. Take care and spread the word. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. That's Arthi. That's Noor. And you're listening to our bonus episode. Buddy. You know the vape that I just like smoked out of? Huh? I like not sure. Do like oils expire? I don't think so. Okay. I hope I don't have a heart attack. How dark. Oh, I don't it? think you'd get a heart attack. What would I get? Um, I don't know. Probably just slowly eat away your insides. Oh, okay. You're putting something uh, like a bad chemical in your body. It's a shame neither one of us has any uh, scientific knowledge. Not even. I'm technically a political scientist. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think that. I don't think that um, a Bachelor of Arts in pol- political science makes me a political scientist. I don't think that makes you anything. That's no, not a person. it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of one of my favorite uh, uh, quotes from the what we're going to be talking about. But I'll bring it up when it comes up. Okay. Um, all right. So let's tell everybody what we're going to talk about. Okay. First of all, did you watch the second episode of Miss Marvel? I have not watched it yet. Oh my I was, god, what? I was, I was in the middle of a deep uh, real world uh, homecoming, New Orleans. I don't know how wh- which order the word's going. Um, I was in a deep binge watch of that. So I can will I tell- watch Miss Horrible tomorrow. Um, can I tell you something about uh, real world? Sure. The, the word real world is a real tongue twister for me. Right? I, I struggle with saying that word. Real world. Burp, burp. It's like, um, I remember on 30 Rock, she's on she's in a movie called The Rural Juror. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's my very own rural juror. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Exactly. Like, you I know, have to be... Think- I very consciously have to think about the words when I say them. Real world. And you think it's because of like the V and the W thing that we had? No, because I don't have a problem saying world. Yeah. I think it's, I don't know. It's just like the mouth. I think it's the eel going into the wool, right? Which is weird because your name is Raheel. So I should like. No, but there's a ha. No, a ha in the middle gives you a break. Raheel world. That's so much easier. (laughs) Real world. Real world. <laughs> Real world. <laughs> hey, I have a question. Where's yes. your mic? 
It's uh, right next to my dick. Uh, hold okay. on. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you're so one thing is that your mic is on the left or yes. the right, and you you actively turn to the opposite side to fucking talk. So here's the deal. So the mic is on the right, but uh-huh. then I have like a two screen setup, uh-huh. and uh, I see my my bigger screen is on my left side. So when I'm looking at you, I have to look on my left. But don't today... look at me. <laughs> well, why don't you just move the window to the other side? Because it's a smaller screen. You don't need to see my big old fucking face. I like to make eye contact. I've noticed, by the way, sometimes when I'm talking to you, you'll just be like, yeah, uh-huh, I get it. And I'll look at the screen and you'll be staring down at your phone texting away. It's super <laughs> rude. Oh my God, don't. That's <laughs> trade secrets. <laughs> I'm like, uh-oh, I didn't do today's Wordle. <laughs> <laughs> Let me catch up on it. Hmm. Now, see, you have no problem saying the word Wordle. Uh, yeah. What wordle. about the real world, girl? I can't do that. You can't do it. Real Wordle. No, I no. can't. Nope. No, no. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the real world. So we are uh, you. I forced you to watch Real World New Orleans Homecoming. Yes, you did. R W. Yeah. And I am eternally grateful. What a show. <laughs> What a show! What a show! It was so good. It was. Mm-hmm. If you don't have Paramount, just just pay what it, just pay whatever it is. I don't know how much it is a month to get Paramount because I'm stealing and then giving to you yes. the login for our my husband's cousin who works for Viacom. <laughs> <laughs> and it is worth every single penny that I've spent on it. Let me. Just tell you. <laughs> Okay, honestly, if I didn't, if like this was a trial, like if I was like, okay, I'll just sign up for the trial and like binge it, I would be like, okay, I will pay. I would pay upwards of twenty five dollars a month. I oh, I would too. So I would, yeah. I would replace the Paramount Plus app. Uh, I, I would replace definitely Hulu. I think now that I'm mm-hmm. done with Brooklyn Nine Nine. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? I don't pay for Netflix, but it doesn't seem like there's anything on Netflix for me anymore. No. Other than The Last Dance, which I watch every two to three months, I do a, a Last Dance rewatch. You know what The Last Dance is? Is that that um, the Chicago Bulls thing? That is exactly what that okay, is. Okay, you know what's funny about that? So <laughs> This is so funny. Andy Cohen, mm-hmm. whenever he's like hosting a reunion where there is a sports person on, mm-hmm. he's like... <laughs> He'll always ask, like, you'll see, like, because sometimes they put in, like, what they're doing between breaks and stuff. And he'll, like, turn to, like, a house husband and be like, hey, you seen the last dance? What do you think about that last dance? So, like, so they just did Real World Miami. I mean, Real World Miami, sorry. Uh, Real House is Miami. And Larsa Pippen is on there. Yeah. And so during commercials, he's like, so, Larsa, did Scotty watch, you know, whatever? And she's like, Yeah. And like he, like a couple of seasons ago, oh, like uh, Real Housewives of Potomac, yeah. um, it was a reunion where he wasn't even on. Um, Juan? Juan Dixon, he wasn't there for the reunion, but he was like, Robin, did Juan watch The Last Dance? Like, <laughs> he just like finds people to talk to about The Last Dance, and he's done it for like the last two and a half years. Well, if uh, anybody hasn't watched The Last Dance, please watch The Last Dance. I, I have watched, watched it. it. Really? Oh my god, it's so good. Has my husband watched it? No, so he's one of the you know we talked about it when it was coming out. We because it came out right at the beginning of COVID, so there were no sports on TV. So in our basketball WhatsApp group, that's all we had to talk about. And he watched like the first episode, and then he stopped watching it because your husband, and this is one of the few things that we disagree on, he is anti Michael Jordan. He is, oh yeah. I didn't know that about him. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's anti-Michael Jordan. He's pro-LeBron in the GOAT debate. Oh, interesting. Where does he stand with um, Kobe Bryant, my home? Rest in peace. Uh, He's very very strict about bringing up the thing that Kobe fans don't like to bring up. He does? Oh, yeah. So that's the thing, right? Your husband is a goddamn liberal pansy pinko, whatever you want (laughs) to Hey, don't talk no, about no, but he's right. But that's the thing, right? So he'll he'll bring it up. Like I will bring it up to like my Kobe friends, yeah, uh, because I just want to have a conversation about like the sports stuff. 
Uh-huh. Um, but he will bring it up every single time. He'll be like, no, I can't judge him. Fuck that guy. Which is wow. very progressive and very nice. Yeah. Wow. What a feminist. Yeah. You know what's funny about him is that um, he's actively like plays devil's advocate with me when I bring up stuff like that. Oh, really? No. So yeah. that's the thing, right? So in our basketball group, yeah. he and I are the progressives. Right. And every single other group that I'm in, you know, we're like, you know, our cousins group and stuff like that. I'm 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 almost an insurrectionist in every other group. <laughs> no, any group that you're in with me, you are almost an insurrectionist because yeah, I have because, no patience for yeah. anything middle of the line aisle. You bring out the worst in people, which is going to be interesting when we talk about these characters. Oh my God. Okay. Let's just, let's get into it. Okay. First of all, number one, I am going to watch The Last Dance. How many episodes is it? It's 10 and they're beautiful. They're amazing episodes. It's so entertaining. So I watched it the first time, obviously, very attentively. Mm -hmm. And then I watched it the second time, very attentively. Is that on Netflix? It's on Netflix now. Okay. Um, but since then, I, I watch it almost uh, as like a sleep aid sometimes because I'm so used to it. But it's like the soundtrack of it is amazing. And I love Michael Jordan so much. And it's so, funny that you, it's funny I that like you brought him. up. It's funny that you brought up Scotty because Scotty is great on The Last Dance. But post Last Dance, he's become a real villain. <gasps> what? So yeah. I always loved michael jordan but then i knew that he was in real life a real problematic person not not true at all he's not problematic at all he's not nice he's just a dick to his teammates yeah which is like not nice he's like not a team to do yeah but he's like not a team player no he's the ultimate team player that's the problem oh the problem is that michael jordan didn't understand why everyone wasn't as good as he was which is you know because he was so good and he was mm-hmm. so good because he would just keep practicing and he keep trying. He was just naturally very gifted. So he would get upset at everybody else because they were never as good as him. Which is why he sucks as like a team owner and a general manager and stuff like that. That doesn't sound like a team player though. No, but that's what you... Because the thing is, is he's still working way harder than everybody else. Right? I get it, but... Look, right. You, you can have a, like a really nice person in the locker room, right? Um, who's all kumbaya and stuff like that. But if you're not winning shit, right, then it doesn't matter. You know, as you describe it, I realize I might be a little bit like Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're a crazy person. I am not like <laughs> Michael Jordan at all. Like, I don't... When we play basketball or whatever, I will pass every oh. single shot up. I mean, I don't sport, as you know. I don't yeah. sport at all. Okay? I don't sport any sport ever. Um... But when it comes to doing things that I care about, I will put in 125% and become irritated that nobody else is putting in any. But at the same time, like I now as an adult recognize that when you put in 125%, you don't leave room for other people to even try because you're so overbearing with your um, effort. Yes. And that's something that I work on, right? No comment. I think the thing that I think the the sport that you're best at okay. is uh, rolling the tapes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Did you see our sister in law roll the tapes on me today? I did. Yeah, when she pointed. Yeah. At the time. Yeah. So it's not really I, rolling the tapes. That's a me move, though. Like I asked her what time we should come over for brunch today, and then she just like scrolled up and replied all to replied back to the message that I sent that she had sent about the time a couple of days ago with the pointing up emoji. But that's like a me move. <laughs> like the two emojis, the two most frequently used emojis in my <laughs> emoji catalog is the laughing crying face and the pointing yeah. up because I roll the tapes on my husband regularly. So I What would you call emo- somebody professionally who rolls tapes on people? Like what a should I roller? have been a, a lawyer? I guess. An asshole? <laughs> <laughs> Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Arts in Political Science with a um concentration what do you call it? on with a concentration <laughs> Professional asshole. Noor Shamim, professional asshole. It's just an A-grade petty asshole. (laughs) 
Grade A, sorry. Do you know that for the longest time I used to say um, A type instead of type A? <laughs> I was like, I know I'm A type. What is wrong with me? <laughs> Nobody corrected me. A type of asshole. <laughs> I am A type of asshole. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. Speaking of assholes, let's talk about real world New Orleans homecoming. Yes. So, um, how do you want to do this? Do you want to just talk about each person in the house? So I think that's probably what we're going to have to do, right? We're going to have to talk about each person. I think maybe if you want to start off about like what you remember about this time when you watch it originally. I, I love Real World New Orleans. Um, it's one that I remember probably the most vividly. And yes. it's one that um, even like there's when I think about real world, I always say like it was my introduction to reality TV. Obviously, for a lot of people, it was. But it was it's what made me fall in love with reality TV because it was the only way that I could ever see people who had these different lifestyles because I would have never seen that in real life. So like. Yeah. You know, Pedro was the first gay man that I ever saw on TV. Yeah. Um, you know, all these different types of people existed. Like, even, like, Tammy Roman, like, she was Muslim on the show, and she talked about being Muslim, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, all these different types of people I experienced for the first time, but Danny on Real World New Orleans was probably, in my mind, like, because this is 2000, so... I was 15. Is that how old yeah. I was in 2000? Yes, nah, you were. Yeah. I was 15. So it was probably like the peak of – it's definitely the the last real world that I actively remember all of, yeah. right? So like Danny was a really big deal to me. Melissa was a really big deal to me. And Melissa was a big deal to me because as silly as it was – her talking about – her like bringing her bag of rice, I remember that so clearly because – I never thought that that was something that other people outside of Daisy's did, like mm -hmm. buy such large quantities of rice. And I remember thinking about how relatable that was. I thought that she was great. And then Julie, I was really connected to Julie because it was the first time that I had ever seen a person who was on TV who didn't have sex and didn't drink. Right. And mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, wow. Like, Mormon people are, I guess, kind of like us. And and I was in high school where one of my good friends in high school is a Mormon girl. So yeah. it was a lot of stuff like that. And I just remember it so, so well. And I remember um, our brother, our eldest brother, <laughs> he's like the third host of this podcast, how much yes, we yes. mention him. But he, he, I remember that was like the last show I really remember watching with him. Yeah. I feel like. And because he loved David and yes. come on, be my baby tonight was like so funny and so silly. Yeah. I actually barely remember everybody else from the show. But then when yeah. I started watching it, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I remember these people and everything like that. Yeah. I think that's basically the same thing for me. I think it was this and Hawaii uh, were, and we may have talked about this the last time too, but I think especially yeah. this one yeah. was the show was like, if you talk about, well, this is my cast, this was my cast. Because yeah. even before, I think, the series premiered, they used to have, like, these casting specials. Yeah. I think they started that with Hawaii. Yeah. Um, and then they had it for this one. So you kind of knew about a little bit about Julie and David and Melissa, I think. And I, and I remember Danny, when he was on the casting special, he didn't, he hadn't come out yet. Yeah. So he came out during the first episode of the actual show. Yeah. Because you're in the and Danny is it's weird, man. Like, um it's same thing, right? It's just I think at that point we'd seen like a number of gay people mm -hmm. on the real world. Um Danny was for me, I was like, if I'm not attracted to this guy, then I'm definitely not gay. He's just <laughs> Did such you a have... beautiful man. Oh my god. Just stunning. Like, I remember also back then being like, he is absolutely just the most gorgeous person I've ever seen on TV. Like, the, yeah. oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, and the fact that he, like, I remember thinking about how crazy it was that he's in a relationship with a man and he can't show his face on TV. But I, 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 I remember back then not really getting the 
hugeness of what was happening. Yeah, I didn't understand the anxiety of it. Think, yeah. yeah, I did not understand the anxiety of it because I didn't even think about – I'll be honest. In 2000, when I thought about Don't Ask, Don't Tell, I was like, all right. That doesn't make sense like to a, me. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. Keep exactly. it in. And who cares? Right? Like, I really didn't think that Like, it was like that crazy because – because I didn't know any gay people in real life and I didn't know exactly. how it actually impacted their lives. That's the truth, right? So to me, I was like, seems good enough. It's and, crazy. And that's and that's what I got out of watching it this time is I was just trying to remember how I thought of these people when I was watching it live back in 2000, right? And I do feel, and I don't know how much of this is editing yeah. or whatever, but I remember Melissa being very entertaining. Yeah. Um, but also the way that she says now that she was painted was which is just like this very loud and entertaining and funny black woman right yeah um, and that's all that was there um i don't i remember the the thing that happened on the boat when they went out into the swamp yeah but i don't remember it being like anything i don't remember it being uh, like taking it in the way that i probably should have right or the, yeah. the way that we know now like yeah. i probably took it in the same way that jamie took it originally Yep. Right. So it's really is, like, this is like, if, if this is what reality TV was, you know, if you could check back in with people every 20 years or so, I would sign up for it. I think this is kind of the only thing that I, that, that I'm really interested in because um, I've been thinking a lot about like, you know, like famous people, when you yeah. try to like frame them into who they were when they were younger, right? So it's interesting now to look at somebody like Jamie and try to remember him, who he was 20 years ago and how mm -hmm. he's just like turned into like this, you know, he's like a mid forties suburban dad now. Yeah. And you think about like the guy that he used to be, or, you know, mm -hmm. you think about Melissa and Julie and all these other people. So it was really, I, I, I like, I was way more emotionally connected to this than I thought that I would be. So emotionally connected. Um, <clears throat> I also, as a reality TV aficionado, it was also really, really cool to watch it and think about the impact. Uh, like, think about how much reality TV has evolved in the last 20 years and think about how, um, you know, how things change. Like, the fact of the matter is that 20 years ago, when you were on a reality TV show, you were just on that show. And then you were like, like they even talked about this. You got a couple of gigs afterwards and then you had to make the best of it. Right. Like, um, <clears throat> I started watching real world, New York, the, the homecoming from New York. Oh, that one is even like, this. it's really cool also because this was 20 years ago. So these are now people in their forties, real world homecoming, New York is people in their fifties. Wow. And so their perspective is also very different because they were the first real world to ever exist. Um, so I, I would it would be really cool if you watch that one's only six episodes. Um, but it, it's really cool because what all these people went through is that they became really, really famous and really, really recognizable, but they were still very poor. Like now you're on a reality TV show, you get a million Instagram followers and you immediately have money because you have advertisements and you have um, these marketing things and you have swipe ups on Instagram. Like you have all these ways to make money, right? And you have ads and all that. So it's very easy for you to make a lot of money by being on reality TV because of social media. But this is early 2000s or like in New York's case, like the 90s, where you just become recognizable. You're in magazines, but you're not actually making money the way that people make now. But people assume that because you are so well known and because you're a public figure that you would be making money or that you are wealthy. And they treat you like a celebrity, but you're not actually a celebrity because you're just a regular person trying to you know get yeah, at it i think my assumption of those people even back then i i didn't think that they became select like you know i didn't think that they became rich but i figured that they all try to get into like acting or media of some sort right yeah um and the only person that i remember actually breaking through was there was this uh girl from uh real San world Diego. London. oh london no. yeah london she became like a like an actual actress. 
Oh yeah, she did. I can't remember her name, but you're right. But that was a very boring cat, so that's why we don't remember London. Either. I remember CT from London. No, he, he was CT in Paris. Was, he was in uh, Paris, yeah. You're right. Uh, real London well. was like 1995. It was very forgettable cat. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Her um, name was Rachel or something? Hold on. Let me look this up. We should really Google these things before. Jacinda. Jacinda Barrett. Jacinda Barrett, yeah. She was the only person who got famous. From that. She was there. And then I remember Tech. Remember Tech from Hawaii? Yes. He's on an episode of Friends randomly. He was. You're right. Yeah. So like that's what they try to do. Yeah. Um, that's what and, and I do remember like it's, you know, they talk about in the very first episode the whole thing about the uh, the the speaking opportunities, the speaking gigs. Mm-hmm. And that was the only um that I remember very, very vi- Hey, Jacinda is married to the guy from Suits. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I did not know that. Harvey. Have you okay. watched Suits? No, no, thank you. It is a it's it is very much like a background show. Uh-huh. It's like it's a bad show, but it's good to have in the background. All right. Um, but I will say that guy is he's very cool. Okay. He's very hot. Okay, anyway, um I remember Harvey these speaking engagements, right? Like yeah. I remember that stuff. Like I remember that that was the one way that we, I knew that, like a thing that I knew that they did where they went to colleges and did, they did these speaking en- engagements. And I remember seeing that in like a behind the scenes or something like that. That was the only thing I knew that these people did. But you know, all of it is so interesting because it it created these, like it created almost these, if you're, if you were in a bad place, it could have created a very traumatic experience for you or a you know or like a dark experience for you or it could have been a great opportunity but like melissa says in the very first episode that you know she always or maybe it wasn't melissa that she said it on here but um i think i follow her on twitter now and she's great so she said that what she always remembered was that she felt like she was a little she was a brown girl who had gotten this big opportunity and she didn't do anything with it i think she said that on the show she felt like she she didn't do enough with it right but it's yeah. like so crazy because back then, what could you even really do with it? But all you ended up becoming was a sort of poster child for these different types of personalities where you're, whether you're an angry, like the way she was, the way that David was taint, painted as this like, you know, kind of sullen, dark, angry man, angry yeah. black man. Or Melissa was this like intense, hyped up, entertaining black woman. And then that's all you're known as, but then you don't ever actually get the space or the opportunity to tell the rest of your story because your story is limited to whatever 16 episodes they showed on TV. Yeah. Melissa says is very, I think it's near the end uh, that Melissa says is very interesting thing where she's like, you know, at the end of the last, the last time that she did this, she ended up being a very, very famous person, but she was still poor. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. She's yeah just exactly. like the like the dichotomy of that of just like what do you do with that, right? Yeah. So. so the the biggest like just the things that happened in the over the eight episodes is like a couple of things that I thought were worth discussing is um the fact that Julie is a fucking menace. <laughs> I guess yeah, if we I, it sucks that we have to start off by talking about Julie because that's exactly what Julie wants. Um, yes. And that's how she came into the show. Yeah. Um, but it's just like Julie is like, it, it's like, um, it's like somebody who's basically like heard everything in the last like whatever, 22 years. Right. And yeah. learn almost nothing from it. Nothing. So, like, she knows all the words, right? She mm-hmm. knows all the words and she knows all the concepts, yep. right? And everything. But she is still just, you know, she, it's all just, there's this subreddit that I get on my feed sometimes called uh, I'm the Main Character. Oh, my God. People. Yes. And she has a lot of I'm the Main Character energy, right? Yeah. And and, and she see, she also seems like, you know, um, AITA, am I the asshole? Yeah. You know yes, that? you are. Yeah, it's like that's, <laughs> I know. No, but like Julie is somebody who would post a long thing in Am I the Asshole to be like, am I the asshole for assuming that this black man beat me or like, you know, hurt me? Yeah. 
when I blacked out drunk and I couldn't remember what I was doing, you know, like, and everybody would be like, yeah, you are the asshole. But she would yeah. like come in with that question because she would pretend like she didn't understand. She would say, am I the asshole? And then everyone would be like, yeah, I think you are kind of the asshole here. And then she'd go off and make a phone call to her husband. And then she'd come back and be like, are you guys talking about me? And it's like, no, yeah. nobody, <laughs> nobody cares, Julie. It's so crazy. So it's, do you, did do you know what happened that actually caused Kelly to leave? Oh, something something different than what happened on the show happened? Yes. Really? So Kelly went on Instagram and okay. she posted about what actually happened. And it's true because Kelly, because everybody else from the cast like commented on it, sending like hearts and stuff and like giving her support. So one of the reasons why she decided to leave was because, you know, they show that scene where uh, Julie shows Kelly a picture of her husband. Mm -hmm. She actually showed a picture of her husband's dick. Oh, God. So she did that. And Kelly is horrified because then Julie's like, oh, why, you know what? She says something like, I don't know who your husband is. Bitch, you know who her fucking husband is. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you know who did not know who her husband was was Melissa's dad, who is a gem of a human being. Oh my god, Shorty. <laughs> Shorty, he goes, Who the hell is Scott Wolf? <laughs> <laughs> what is his name? I like Scott Wolf. What are your feelings on Scott Wolf? He's so hot. I you never know, watched Orange. West oh, Orange. He's from West own. Orange? I believe he was born in Boston, but he graduated high school from uh, West Orange. Oh my god, amazing. Um I mean, I never watched Party of Five, but, you know, I'll give a roar to any cutie from the 90s. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so she did that. And apparently, because, um, you know, they always, even on the original show, they would always have one day a week where there were no cameras rolling. Yeah. So on one of the days when the cameras were not rolling, apparently um, Julie, Kelly, like, did something happen with the coffee, coffee machine and Julie went off on her, cornered her and said, what does it feel like to be the fucking, uh, how does it feel like to be a fucking idiot? How does it feel to be stupid? Oh she God. got in her, in Kelly's face and started like screaming at her and was like, no more miss nice Julie. And, so and like, Julie's actually worse than what we saw on the show. So yeah, what we saw on the show is Julie being an asshole and then doing the fragile white woman tears about it yeah. to try because she thinks that that's her out, right? And you know, I, I tried when I was watching, and I tried to give her like the benefit of the doubt where, <laughs> right? but no, it's so no, difficult. No, there's it's none. Like, it's and it's weird because like I still remember like the young Julie, like the young spunky Julie who I liked in, back yeah. in like 2000. I didn't like 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 her, but I was like, yeah. you know, she's a fun person. And then I remember being shocked when. She had that very like uh, public falling out with Melissa on the challenge. Yeah, two thousand three when they showed it. But like watching her now, it's like it's weird because like you almost have like like the the, the villains like um like her villain arc of how she became just like this you know weird forty four year old white lady who just thinks that yoga pants are appropriate for all occasions. And, who like, thinks that yoga? Yeah, who thinks like yoga pants are a personality trait? Like, I just yeah. love that when she gets up and storms off the first time, Melissa's like, "All right, well, <laughs> there goes Lulu Lemon." Storm <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure we're talking a lot about Melissa, but she is the best. I need her to have an all the time reality TV show, and she yeah. never would, right? Because I think that's what makes Melissa great is that she she like knows. Like, she doesn't need to be on camera all the time, right? Like, yeah. she seems like somebody who's like, this is great for a little bit, but I really need my space to, like, be yeah. my own person. Like, she's she lives in New York. She converted to Judaism. She's, like, raising three children. I think living in Long Island. Like, she's living a, a great life. She's a podcast. I should try to get her on my podcast. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Right? I she she to likes the housewives. She mentions Yeah, it. she mentions them multiple times. I really... Yeah. So Ray Sani, friend of the podcast, friend in real life, is trying to cultivate a real life relationship with Melissa. And Ooh. I'm like, I'm like, listen, Ray, <laughs> if you're hanging out with Melissa, please let me know because I would like to come. Um, but yeah, she's just so funny. She's yeah. hilarious. I love that she always walks around in the whole show. She, you always see her walking around with like a green, like her purse. Like 
<laughs> she's, she's either got her purse or her water bottle, like always sitting next to her. I don't know. There's just something about her that I found like so comforting. But yeah, so Kelly posted how it was a thousand times worse. But what I found very confusing and I don't understand, and this is, I, I have this question also when I watch, um, you know, Housewives and I find out about behind the scenes stuff. I don't know why MTV is trying to protect Julie. Why yeah. wouldn't we know these things on camera? Why was it painted as, you know, Kelly is just weirdly uncomfortable and needs to leave, right? Like, why don't we get the truth about Julie? And the only thing I can think is that I watched the first season of Homecoming, which is New York, and a big part of that was a very – it was another it was another ignorant white woman who, you know, did said all the right things, said black lives matter and love is love and all these things and I'm all these things but didn't ever clock her own microaggressions and didn't you know, came into situations being like I'm not racist. So, um you don't need to tell me a thing or two, right? Uh, yeah. because I have black friends. Like she was that. Um and the thing is I th- I would th- I think that maybe the producers of the show are saying we can't have like that be the arc every season, but I think it should be because it's like, Hey, you can have seven people who live together at a time when they should have been learning things from each other. And at the all at the end, the result isn't that all seven people are evolved because yeah. it doesn't work that way. You have to, you have to keep evolving and learning and seeing how the world changes around you. Right. Like even if you look at like Matt, what did you think about Matt? Oh, we're gonna, I, I want to do a whole thing on Matt because I, I I recognize Matt um, way more as a person than maybe anybody else uh, on the show. What do you Only mean? Because I- so he reminds me a lot of my what I would deem my good religious friends, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Them. Yes. Yep. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, because the one thing about Matt is is that you know when he tells Danny that he loves him, um, and when he tells everybody else that he loves them, I I believe him a hundred percent. Like Matt mm. seems genuinely to me like a very very nice person. He does. Now, I don't know what else is going on in the background. I don't know if there's a backstory or whatever. But <sighs> I genuinely believe Matt. I, I, that is that is an unfortunate face that you're making. Is he literally say- says to Danny, "I don't know why God made you the way that you are." So, and that's which is a thing, really right? fucked up thing to say to a person. Well, so that is what he said to Danny back in two thousand, and he apologized for that on the show. So when he said, um, "You know, I don't understand how how God made you the way that you are," right? And I'm broken about it. He said that to him back in two thousand, and on this season, he apologizes for it. And you know that that whole that scene where they're where Danny's like talking to him about like how he's tired of hearing like I'm sorry um, you know love the sinner and hate the sin yeah you know what I mean I, yeah. I feel like Danny at that point is he's talking to Matt because Matt's just the person who's in the room that he's going to be that he can talk to about that yeah. but it's something that he's heard his entire life yeah I, but yeah. like in terms of like. You know, it's a weird thing, right? It's like we come from a religious background yep. also, mm-hmm. right? So when I say I understand the person, that's the person that I know. That's almost, I would say, like 99% of the Muslims that I know. Yeah. But 99% of the Muslims that I know would, and those are like the good guys. You know, there's mm-hmm. bad people that are just outright like, hey, this is a sin. You know, yeah, this like, is not just a sin, but it's all, you know, it's a choice that you're making and all this other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Matt, I think he is actually struggling with that stuff. Um, so I would, <laughs> I would take, you know, I would take 10 mats over mm. like a single Julie. I mean, the, sure. Julie is like this, you know, Julie is like this overtly sexual and overtly open person or whatever that is. But. I feel like Matt's sincerity when he's talking to Danny about like, you know, how he actually feels sorry and he's, he doesn't know how to get past it. I think it's sincere. And I, I would take that guy. Here's the thing. I think that Matt and Julie are two sides of the same coin. I don't think so. Because they're both, um, they're both ignorant in different ways. So 
Matt, to me, like, initially I was like, okay, well, you know, he believes what he believes. And I also viewed it kind of like, oh, I know a lot of people like this. But as we saw, Matt was actively avoiding and talking about how certain things made him uncomfortable, right? Yeah. You're 40 years old. You're a 40-year-old yeah. man in America. And and I get that you are religious and all those things. But there's something just really bizarre to me about, about making a choice to go on a reality TV show, which by season nine, you know, in New Orleans, you know is going to introduce you to certain things, right? For you to for you to do that, right, when you're younger and just say, you know, this is who I am, whatever, whatever. But then for you to continue to to, to like you're aware of what you're gonna be walking into in New Orleans in this house, right? Like a tarot card reader, right? Like you're you're going to a city where that's like almost uh like you have to do that as like a like a tourist in New Orleans. That's like a, one of the things that you do, right? You're going um, to a place where you know that there's going to be a discussion about LGBTQ stuff. You don't even have a fucking answer for it. Like he was so – there was something about the way that Matt s- kind of shut down the conversation in the confessional about it that I found really dark. The way that he was like, oh, I don't do the tarot stuff, like that I found really alarming to the point where I feel like – people who people who actively avoid stuff like that people who get uncomfortable about stuff like that to me that tells me that they're hiding something or that there's something else that's going on that's making them avoid it it's not just a matter of my beliefs are my beliefs if he really was somebody who was like oh i i love you no matter what but like th- 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 there's there's like a level I feel like of judgment that is still sitting behind all the big smiles and all of the love is love stuff that Matt does that I think is, I find it very disingenuous. Like I, I don't, you know, you can sit there and say as much, and Matt just reminds me of people who are like, oh, I, you know, like really conservative Republicans who are like, oh, I love you and I love your family and all that stuff. And I think immigration is great, but ultimately I'm still going to vote against you and anything that protects you. And I'm still going to vote against, um, you know, uh, abortion rights. And I'm still going to vote against uh, gay rights. And I'm still going to vote against all these things, right? Like, that's the thing about Matt. That's what I think Matt represents to me, is that you're still somebody who can, you can sit here and you can tell me a hundred times to my face that you love me. But when it comes down to like brass tacks, you're still going to always do the thing that protects you first and your interests first and your love for me is not really going to do anything because of your fundamental belief that I am not worthy of protection the same way that you think you're worthy of protection. And that's what I think is fucked up. And I say that he and Julie are two sides of the same coin because Julie on the other side is somebody who is like, I'm liberal and I'm sex positive and I do yoga And I show people my husband's weird dick and I'm, you know, woke in whatever way, but she's still ignorant because again, when push comes to shove, she still is going to call a black man violent and she's still going to be like, oh, now you think I'm racist. Like it's still, it's still ignorance at its core. And, and that's what I hated about both of them. Well, so that's the thing. I will disagree with you. I think completely on that. Well, not completely, because I get what you're saying about, hey, you know, you you feel that he's just saying whatever he's saying as lip service, right? Yeah. I honestly don't, th- you know, that wasn't my feeling of him. And that's not my feeling of my super religious friends either. And, you know, the thing is, is like, you know, I can talk about my own morals. Like, you know, we, I, I know for myself, I've had like an evolving, I, I've had an, uh, like an evolution on how I think about homosexuality and gay people on that stuff right yeah, yeah, yeah. i think now what i think today is completely different from what we were taught when we were growing up right yeah and all of that stuff right um what i will say is just because matt's morals on this subject don't match up with mine i don't i wouldn't throw away you know whatever morals he gets from his religion there's a lot i'm sure there's a lot of good that his religion 
brings into the world for him. Sure. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. then, you know, and so who am I to, I dis I disagree with him 100% on this, on this one thing. Right. And I think he's clearly struggling with it himself also. And he, and he says that to Danny, he's like, I am struggling with it and I buy it. I would much rather somebody tell me that, Hey, I disagree with it. I'm struggling with it, but this is what my religion, this is, this is what I believe. Because if it was, you know, if, if he was a type of person who was just like, yeah, no, I, I accept it, right? I accept it, and he didn't actually accept it. I would think that that's bad. Like, that that's like the Julie way of thinking about things. Right? Yeah, of course. But, like, I'm just surprised that nobody in that room was like, hey, what if one of your six kids is gay? What yeah, are you going to do? Okay. But that's the thing, right? For somebody like Matt, right? For somebody like Matt, he probably on some level still thinks that it's something that you can control. He thinks that it's some sort of, you know, like that. Like that a struggle. Hurt it's an urge or a struggle or whatever. Yeah. And that's not an uncommon belief. That's, that's a belief that I'm sure many people that you and I love completely have. Oh, I know, but it's not, I know that it's not an uncommon belief, but it, but as a person who like is very close to people of the LGBTQ community, mm -hmm. I, just because the belief is uncommon doesn't mean that it's um, tolerable in my opinion. Well, well, it's tolerable to them, right? So that's that's my thing. It's like, you know, somebody like Matt wouldn't go out of his way to hurt uh, and a member of the LGBTQ community, right? I don't think he would physically, mm. I don't think he would ever, ever physically hurt somebody for being gay. Yeah, but he would definitely share an Instagram post. Uh, you know, you know who Matt reminded me of? And maybe he had, it is possible that Matt could evolve, right? But like I said, in high school, one of my closest friends is was this Mormon girl. Okay. And her name's Diana, and she got married when she was 19. And she married um, her husband, and they Dave, and they moved um, to Utah. And they did all the things. They lived a very Mormon life. And I remember in like 2000, I don't know, six or seven, I remember getting an email from David. And it was like her husband who was like, um, you know, sign this petition because they're trying to pass gay marriage. And she, he, he sent it. It was like a mass email, right, that he sent out to a whole bunch of us. And a bunch, all of us who were friends with her, we all text each other. And we're like, did you fucking see this shit? Like, what the hell is this, right? Like, I don't think Dave realizes the friends that Diana has back in New Jersey because he was from Utah. And so he didn't know. And now they have a trans son and – it's great. And they're super supportive of them. And they're, they're use, you know, the name that their child identifies with. And it's really great. Like, I think it's possible for them to evolve. I think that Matt could possibly evolve, especially because he has so many kids. It's definitely, but the way that Matt thinks, I'm saying at, at its core right now, as a person with a platform and as a person on television, I'm not saying that he should have like said he was supportive of it if he's not, but as somebody who was part of a show that is so progressive mm -hmm. to still kind of have these antiquated views is very, it's hopeless to me. Like I'm like, I don't if, think you, if you still haven't gotten there, I'm like not sure when you will. And, and and because he continues to bubble himself where he was like, oh, I'm not going to go to the drag bar. But then when he gets pictures, he's like, oh, OK, this is a lot more innocent than I thought it was. And like, especially appropriate now to talk about because the people in fucking Texas are trying to like ban drag shows, which is ridiculous. But like, you know, he continues he continues to want to like he says he wants to grow but at the same time he actively blocks himself from being around people that could possibly change his view and i think that's the part that i think is is what keeps me from believing that matt is possible it's possible for him to evolve no but the thing is is like going to a drag show right mm -hmm. is it the same as I, you know, I, I understand Matt not wanting to go to a drag show. I understand mm -hmm. Matt not wanting to do a tarot card reading. That's not a weird thing to me. Like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of religious people that I know that avoid things that are like, okay, I understand that these things are out there, but they're not for me. And that's what you want a good religious person to do is you, you'd say, okay, you know what? 
go ahead, do the thing that you want to do. It's not for me. So I'm going to step out. That's, I, I don't understand how that's a bad thing. I think that's actually a great thing. That's like an evolved thing. To be like, no, because it's not an evolve, evolve thing because it's not like he, because his reasons for avoiding it are not just, this isn't for me. His reasons for avoiding it were things like, I don't want to control the future or whatever. I don't want to change this idea that God, you know, is in control. Getting a tarot card reading is not going to, it's not witchcraft. You fucking I idiot. understand, but you right. and I both know people that are against, that would be against getting a tarot card reading, right? We know we, when we were growing up, you couldn't read palms. I'm sure there's people, if I, if I asked our mother right now, Hey, can I go get a palm reading or whatever? She will find a scholar who will be like, are you out of your fucking okay, mind? Okay, our mom, she would, she could try to do that shit with us, but her best friend is an astrologist. So I, we know I that she's it. full of shit, right? Like, so I I get what you're my, saying. I get what you're saying, is, but I think, I think because of the way that Matt was communicating the reasons for why he was avoiding these things told me that Matt doesn't actually know what goes on at these places. He doesn't okay. actually know, and his assumptions are what will continue to keep him in the dark about these issues. And saying, I just love you, but I'm going to avoid you, is a weird fucking like thing to say. But you don't have to be into all of your friends' extreme likes and dislikes. Like, I could have a friend who, you know, who likes to do whatever, I, but I can choose to not be involved in every, you know, I have friends that do coke, right? I don't want to do coke, which is, okay, I know, I know I just made a terrible, terrible comparison. Very problematic. About, about, about because, but I'm not talking about homosexuality, right? I'm talking about like, so I, you know, I, I go to a bar with my friend, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if I would go, I, I'd probably still go to a drag show because it seems like it's a good time. For whatever. It's so fun. Yeah. Right. And I've been to a drag show and stuff like that, but I understand why a religious person wouldn't want to go to something like that because it's too extreme for them so they're avoiding it no that's that's fine but even him saying oh this is a lot more innocent than i thought it was gonna be yeah and because he just saw one picture and he also didn't see julie being a pass out drunk well, oh and then another thing that really bothered me about matt is that when julie comes home and she's throwing up he doesn't actually do anything to help her he just sits in the corner of the room and watches her which is fucking yeah. weird it's not weird. He's watching Tokyo help Julie. He's concerned for her, but no, he's just somebody mm, else is also. I think honestly, I think you are looking for reasons to hate on my boy. I, I don't need to look. I can see plenty. Christ of is king. Christ is king. No joke. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a. I think we should okay, move let's on move on because I think I think we disagree on this. Yeah, agree to disagree. I want mad in my life. Okay, you're a, say, agree to disagree. You're a bigot. Let's move on. <laughs> All of I the think, I think the biggest sin that I hope Matt realizes is that whatever sin that he thinks that other people are are committing, um, that is keeping him from connecting with him. Like his sin of exclusion is way worse than anything that I think. Yes, Raheel, that was great. Great save. Okay, everybody, <laughs> we're back in on Raheel. Okay, forget the um, coke. Let's move. Yeah, the Coke thing was a big mess. Ugh. Um, I need to whiteboard this stuff before I start talking. <laughs> <laughs> a note to self let's not compare doing hard drugs to people's sexualities that's not a good comparison. no that's not what i said, said dead drag bar all right anyway <laughs> let's move on to tokyo what a delight that I was love, the biggest fucking surprise for me i love his i love that he has like this little punch now okay i love his entire look I love his entire look. I love that his walk is still like the old David walk, but it's like a little bit heavier and older and shorter now. <laughs> and the fact that that man matches his headband with his wristbands in every single outfit. Amazing. That seems like a you move. I feel like there was a time when you were really into wristbands or headbands. That's not true. What are you I talking know, I, about? Why do I feel like I can imagine you wearing... <laughs> wristbands and headbands around the house that, that is it, maybe when i was like four or something <laughs> i do remember having wristbands when i was four <laughs> maybe there's like I a picture of you as a kid yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know but yeah what a delight I, I love that he loves manga um yeah. even though i don't understand manga but i love that he loves it 
I'm yeah. glad that there's something there for him. And I want you to have a bar mitzvah for Aiden. A and bar I mitzvah? want you to hire a bar mitzvah for Aiden. Yeah. Yeah. And I want you to hire Tokyo as a bar mitzvah dancer. Oh my God. Because he's I, just, I love him. I he was uh so the 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 one comment that he made when Julie was just being again overly sexual. Yeah. She's like, let's go take a shower. Yeah. And he goes, that's not even a thought. That's not even a thought. I want to, I think that's like, you could cover like 98% of Twitter. Yeah. By just saying, that's not even a thought. Yeah. That's not even a thought. I should make a, I should make merch. Yes. That's not even a thought. Yeah. Um, Everything about him was so surprisingly delightful. Everything yeah. about this evolution of David to Tokyo was, there was, it was there were there were so many parts of it that I was like, ten years ago I probably would not understand this. But like Melissa said it right in the beginning, she said, "Listen, we call people by the name that they want to be called. You want to be called Tokyo? That's fine. I will call you Tokyo. That's none of my business, right?" Like, yeah. I loved it. I love the fact that we just and I love that people around the house keep calling him David, and whenever they do, he goes Tokyo, and like, yeah. <laughs> <just> bless. <laughs> what? He says bless and love yeah. you when they, they go, oh, yeah, sorry, Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I um, I just loved it. I loved everything about him. I loved that he came into the space wanting to, like, genuinely connect with everyone, wanting to do right, wanting to kind of make up for the fact that he didn't get a chance to connect with his roommates the first go around. And then he's very honest about the fact that, like, hey, this – belligerent as psychopath took 90% of my energy. I try to be a good person and it hit, it like slapped me in the face and I am now in introverting all the way inside of my body and I'm not connecting with anybody anymore. I'm done. Yeah. So that like the, like that last, it feels like a you, that feels like a you move. It made me very sad because I would do that. I would, yeah. I completely shut down at a certain yeah. point. And you know, that's everything that you said about Tokyo completely agree with. I was just thinking like he gives people so much room to like correct themselves. Yeah. Like during that race conversation, right? If I had been in, in Tokyo's position, if I had fucking slept on the floor next to you after you threw up all night, just so I could take care of you. And then the next day you try to change the narrative about how I was being violent with you. I would be fucking done with you forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then during the race conversation, when Julie actually makes one good point, yeah. he's right, like right away, he's like, yes, God bless you. Yeah. You know, he's like sincere. He is just a lovely human being. And yeah. I wish that, you know, whatever it is that's bothering him or whatever, it, you know, that he held back on near the end or whatever, he figures it out. But it's just, I want to, I want to hang out with him. I want to be protected by him. <laughs> I, pre- his head <laughs> <laughs> I want to I feel like it I do feel like in the realm of like of the spectrum of like of like um of uh tolerance of people I feel like you are definitely closer to the Tokyo end of the spectrum and I am yeah. definitely more so on the Melissa side of things where I'm like I'm not gonna fuck with you anymore I'm done with you I think Melissa is a little bit more tolerant than me <laughs> I think you're more of a, I think you're a progressive Matt is the way that I see you. (gasps) What? (laughs) How dare you? I'm joking. Okay. Do you think, what do you think that Julie's uh, end game was with Jamie? And do you think that Jamie actually gives a shit about Julie at all? You know, it's a weird feeling to feel sad for somebody who is told that you gave me my first orgasm. (laughs) Jamie is just like I. I want nothing to do with it. I think at that moment, like if you could like do like a thought bubble over Jamie, you'd just be like, "This is why you don't stick your dick in crazy," because this is what happens. Because she is clearly like it is, it, and you know, I I want to be sensitive because obviously it's different for women, and Jamie's obviously probably a lot more experienced when it comes to sexuality or whatever. 
Yeah. So she's just, it's too much, man. Her and her, her fucking husband, who was oh, also so weird. weird. So it is weird. not, I'm telling you right now, between you, because I'm never getting married, but you and your husband, a hall pass is not a romantic gesture. It is gross. <laughs> and it's weird. No. No, I, first of all, I have a theory about all this. I think that it was all bullshit. So I think, like, especially because of that that um, conversation they overheard Julie having in the hot tub, where yeah. she was like, I got hammered last night. I'm trying to produce a television show. And these people yeah. are so fucking boring and all this stuff. Like, she really came in thinking that she was going to be the fucking Countess Luanne de la Sepp, And everybody was like, ma'am, this is a very different television show that we're on. Like, we're all adults. We're yeah. all adults that used to be on t- a reality TV show, and we're fine leaving the show and going back to our real lives. And Julie came in being like, this is my time to shine. I'm going to get on a challenge. I'm going to get on something. They're going to have me back. Look at Julie. She was a conservative Mormon, and now she's fun. Look at her husband's dick. Like, yeah. she's that person, and she was, like, really fun. auditioning. What? Yeah, she says fuck every chance that she gets, and motherfucker. She's, yeah, she says she curses a lot. You know, she does yoga. She she watches VR porn. She watches VR porn. She ropes like she. <laughs> 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 you know, she she tries to have weird outdoor tent sex with her husband. Like I don't know what the hell that was. It was so uncomfortable. But she came in wanting to produce a television show, and I think that she came in. With this thought of uh, of Jamie, is, this is a way for me to add like a new layer to the storyline of I'm going to try to make my husband jealous with this guy um, who I once hooked up with for a little while. And yeah. and like Jamie is fully like, I don't know what's happening, yeah. but all right, buddy. Like, <laughs> you know, he's like just trying to be a nice person, I think. Yeah. But like. She came in with that, and then when her husband, she says, like, oh, my husband called, and he's, like, freaking out and all this stuff. I don't think that that's what her husband was no. doing. I feel like she must have told her husband something else. I don't think that it was this over the Spotify playlist. I think it's really strange that every time her husband calls, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm here with Jamie. Like, she purposely yeah. keeps doing all these things, and she is purposely trying to make it seem like – there is something going on with her and Jamie when actually I don't believe that there was anything going on. If I was Jamie's wife, I'd be like, I'm going to cut this bitch. Like, who the fuck are you? I would lose I, it. So, you know, the thing is, if I was Jamie's wife, it's a weird sentence I never thought I would say, <laughs> uh, I, would, I wouldn't I would be threatened by Julie at all because she is, you know. It's, a maniac. It's, a lunatic. Just, and, I'm, you know, I'm happy for your, uh, uh, just as Kelly says, I'm happy for your sexual enlightenment or whatever the hell that's going on but at a certain point it just becomes uncomfortable for people do you remember if you remember arrested development yeah there's a character named kitty sanchez who was just yes flashing michael yes <laughs> say goodbye to these michael <laughs> that's what julie reminded me of <laughs> eyes up here michael and it's like nobody's <laughs> looking at you yeah that's basically that that was what Julie was doing, but apparently also Kelly left a while before the show ended. Like they kept oh. saying, like, "Oh, she left right before," but apparently Kelly left like a good five days before the show ended. Yeah, because I mean Kelly. She, I think on this uh, on this go around, kind of like the same thing as last time, mm-hmm. which is just I think she's just reserved. I don't think that she's a person who is comfortable being on TV. Yeah, and I, I think, think she realized that. Movies. Yeah. yeah, I think she realized that. And then I think she also realized that she didn't want to be on TV with this lunatic and she didn't want to be <laughs> around her anymore. And yeah. whatever show it is that Julie was trying to make, she was like, oh, I don't want to be on that television show. Also, I think Kelly realized that she's married to a whole ass celebrity and she doesn't need this in her life, right? Like, I think it was probably an opportunity for Kelly to be like, oh, let me go on a reality TV show again now as an adult who is very sure of themselves and see if this can be fun. And then she was like, oh, yep, still not fun. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, you have to, if you're going to be doing a reality TV show, you have to, like, you, your personality has to be set to that, right? And I don't think she wants to do that, so. Yeah, all right. Um, what, were you excited to see um, Paul, Danny's boyfriend? 
Um, I was very excited to see Paul. I did not know. What is he? Is he a, a man of color? Is he a person of color? Yeah, I'm not sure. But he was a darker complexioned man. Very yes. handsome. Very handsome. And he was, uh, I mean, I don't know. There's a probably mustachioed no right man. Way for me to, yeah, there's no right way for me to say this, I'm sure. But he did not look, in 2022, he did not look like the person that I imagined him to be in 2000, which I think is true, which is what Danny says also, right? Because yeah. in 2000, he's a military man, and now he's very much out. Yeah, I loved it. I loved his um, outfit and his jewelry. And he was, yeah, I mean, sorry, Paul was wearing like this necklace. Yeah. And it reminded me of one of those Aitul Grissi necklaces that we had <laughs> when we were kids. And they I just made me giggle. I still have Do you it. really? Yeah. One of those. It's I in my know. gold stash. By the way, oh. I asked our mother about the gold stash. And I said, um, if Raheel doesn't get married, what do you want me to do with that gold? Do I just get to keep it? And she said, no, you can sell it and give him the money. Oh. But like, when does that happen? When do we decide that you're definitely not getting married when you're like 60? I think we do it. Is that your 401k? That's a, that We do it the day that she kicks it. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys heard it first. Um, were you excited to hear uh, the story about Come On Be My Baby tonight and how that changed for Tokyo over... The, so the I remember of, watching it yeah. on Chappelle show. Yeah. And I, I mean, I, I don't remember it actually being a song other than just like the, from the show. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't like a, like a single or anything like that. No. But um, it was sad. It was sad what happened to him. Yeah. Such a good song though. It's the a scatting. Why would we be better by? <laughs> <laughs> Sweet booty baduba. <laughs> I am. Um, I asked you to do this because there's also pop songs. Oh yeah. Do you have a list? I didn't make the list. Of course you did. You never prepare. Okay. A running theme. You're an A type asshole. A type of asshole. <laughs> um, I have a list, and okay. I think we should just agree that "Come On, Be My Baby Tonight" is our mutual number one. Okay, sure. Honorary number one. Okay, fine. But basically, it was what song from the from this era from this era when you heard it excited you? Do you um, remember any? You can just do top five. I like okay, that. I think "Sex and Candy" made me really happy. I mentioned that last. I week knew too. that was one of your songs, and I've always hated that song. What? I don't like that song at all. That was one of the CDs that we got from the Columbia House deals. Who you is that? that? Marcy Playground? Oh, we Marcy, talked about Marcy this. Playground, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't like that song. I'll tell you my least favorite song, and it's probably okay. because of like the memory tied to it now, is uh, uh, Give Me Just One Night by 98 Degrees. <gasps> oh, no, no, Jay. First of all, I don't think they can do that anymore. I don't think four white boys from Cincinnati <laughs> can sing Oh, no, no, Jay. Come on. <laughs> Secondly, it played while... A Julie and her husband were fucking in the background. <laughs> well, the song is ruined. I'm done. You know that that act? It reminded me of something that happened in our past. Oh my god, are you t- are you talking about her aunt? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But I don't think that that happened. <laughs> <laughs> What is that? Very public displays of affection. You're away from your husband for a week. You can you can put it in your pants. It's fine. I know. I know. I know. I know. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, My favorite song was... Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll give you a top five. Okay. Uh, number five uh, is like the beginning of that Blink-182 song. Which one? What's My Age Again? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a very... Like, it puts me right in that era. All right. Number four... I would say is Babylon by David Gray. Oh, such a good song. Of course. Was music just better back then? Or are we just the, (laughs) are we just old and saying back in the day type of thing? No, I think we're old. It's really shocking to me when I think about this, the fact that like Babylon is a song from that long ago. Cause when I think of Babylon, I'm like, Oh, that was like right before I got married. But then like I got married over 10 years ago. So two years old. That song. 
But I think it's also because like the recording by then and the recording now, I mean, in terms of like audio quality yeah. is pretty much the same versus like when we were like back in like 2000 versus songs that were like made in the 80s and the 70s and stuff. They still sounded old. I don't think these songs sound old anymore. But um, I think that's also because we're old. I think we're old. I think that's... Really? Yeah, dude, we're old. You're almost 40. Go fuck yourself. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> number three for me, which may surprise you, was... Uh, uh, where did I put it? The Jennifer Lopez song? Um, Waiting for Tonight? New Year's Eve. Huh? Waiting, Waiting for, for tonight. tonight. Yeah. Oh, can I give you one song that I do remember that I do think yes. is really good? Let's yes. back that back that ass up. Yeah, of course. It's the the it. keys. <laughs> right when it starts. <laughs> so good. Um, <clears throat> I like that. I like take a picture. Also, put me back into that mode. Yeah, that's okay. So if I was gonna make, you know what, I'm going to. I'm gonna make a playlist. If I make I it on, songs. huh? I can give you all the songs. Yeah, I'm gonna make us. I'm gonna make a playlist. I'll put it on our Patreon. You can listen to it. But we'll make a playlist of songs that we care about from the 2000s. Because I'm not gonna lie. Like I know that it sounds like a very old person thing to say, but I, I just like music from back then. I don't like new music anymore. And it sounds like and any new music that comes out, the only ones I do like are like the Taylor Swift songs that sound like Dixie Chicks. Like yes. I don't. Like any Taylor Swift song now that sounds like it should be played at Lilith Fair, I'm like, this sounds great. Yeah, I think Wide Open Spaces was on, on this one. Yeah, it was. Wide open. <laughs> it's so good. There's a, there's a Sade song when. Uh, uh, okay, Tokyo first of all, it's Shaw Day. And is this Sade? Yeah, it is. It's a uh, God. I know the song. It's Jesus Christ. I've listened to it all the time. My brain's not working. by your side. Yes, by your side. That's a great song. I, now I haven't heard that song probably in like sixteen years. A fun fact about that song is that it's in my um, heads down work playlist. Really? Yeah. I should add it. It's so right as soon as I, you know, right as soon as it started playing, um, for some reason I just started remembering. Like, remember CGI bubbles? There used to be lots of CGI bubbles in music videos. CGI bubbles. I like don't know bubbles. What you mean by that. Like they would in the music video. You mean like Papa always... Video? No, no, not Papa Video. Like they would be CGI bubbles. Okay, just like bubbles. Would be lots of bubbles, <laughs> like regular bubbles, like balloon. Like no, but bubbles. they would be CGI. <laughs> How do you know that they were CGI? Because I watched making the video. <laughs> so green screen bubbles. Green screen bubbles. Okay. Remember how much MTV we used to watch? It was like 80% of the things that I watched. Honestly, it was MTV. And then when Bravo came around, I was like, well, this is the only thing I'm going to watch now. It was like really? MTV and Food Network. And then it went from MTV and Food Network to Bravo and Food Network. And now yeah, I don't watch like, any Food Network. I don't I don't even have Food Network anymore, sadly. Yeah. But like 99 to like 2001, when we watched TRL. And we watched like The Blame Game or Single Dad or whatever that was. It was 98 to 2000. I'm going to say, you know what? I watched MTV well into college because I watched The Hills and Laguna Beach. Yeah. So that's the thing. I never watched those. Yeah. And I watched some of Jersey Shore later on because it was very Yeah, I funny. came back for Jersey Shore, but I only watched Jersey Shore. I wasn't watching like the so afternoon good. programming. So the good. Best. It was the best. Yeah. Um. But anyway, I, yeah, I love the music from the show. It, and that was actually one of the things that I, that kept me watching, which is weird to say, like, even though the stories were really good, every time the music came on, came on, I was like, man, this is a good show. Yeah. It was like the soundtrack to my life, if you will. Um, I did not appreciate that they used the vitamin C song at the end, because I was like, of course they're going to use vitamin C. Remember <laughs> vitamin C? Yeah, that was my graduation song also. Of course, it was everybody's graduation song. Everybody's graduation song, yeah. When I was in high school, they had like the local radio station. Mm -hmm. They had people call in and then they would cut those clips into the middle of the song. Mm -hmm. So you just hear somebody go, hey, this is Rob from Parsippany Hills High School. <laughs> Wait, did you do that? Like, did you pretend did to be Rob? On my way to, um, what's it called, senior night, mm -hmm. um, we were listening to the radio and we tried to call. Oh, okay. Maybe they get through. 
Well, mm. mm. And then I've here's only... to the night. Yeah. Oh, here's to the night is another good one. Mm-hmm. Eve six was really popping back then too. I think Eve six is a big advocate for uh, trans people now. Oh, good for them. Yeah. Wonderful. Um, what was the name of the band that sang that song that Adele did a cover of? Ooh, what a weird question. What a weird thing I just said. Yeah, what's um, the song? How's the song go? Um, I Will Always Love You. I Will Always Love You. It's Whitney Houston. Real? Oh, Shut I the fuck like up. What? Is it Lynn? <laughs> is it Steal My Sunshine? Is it's it not Lynch? Steal My Sunshine, which is another great song. Um, it. No, it's Whenever I'm Alone With You. You make me feel, you feel like, like I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love song. Oh, that's, a, that's a love song. Yeah. Like, that's, you're thinking of the 311 version. Yeah, who sang it? Well, I know it's a Cure song. 311. Yeah. Okay, so 311. 311. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, there you go. Also, another. Also Amber. Remember Amber? Yes. The color of my energy. Whoa. No, we're just talk- we're just naming songs. <laughs> and singing. I, I want you to realize that's what we've been doing for the last fourteen minutes. <laughs> hey, you remember Rockabye? <laughs> yeah, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah, man. Honestly, uh, like. Let's it's just stop making music. new music. Yeah, let's just stop making new music. Who cares? It's embarrassing that like people that are um in their their graduates of college and like they can drink and stuff, buy houses, that they existed at a time when these songs meant nothing to them because they were infants. That I want you to I want you to hit pause, okay. listen to that sentence again, <laughs> and try to and explain to me what the fuck you meant. Because it just kept going on. <laughs> I should sure get to a point at some point. <laughs> Let, me Let me repeat that thought. I can't believe that there's people <laughs> who are full adults who, okay. d- who don't know some of this music because when it came out, they were infants. There you go. That makes sense. There's a whole thing about buying houses in the middle. <laughs> yeah, there's and people graduating who can, college. Who is people who are full adults who yeah. graduated college, who can drink, who could buy a house, make money, who exist at a time where they might not know I smell sex and candy. What's the name of that Miss Teen South Carolina who gave that answer? <laughs> Watched that not long ago. Uh, <laughs> talk about we didn't talk about Jamie. Well, um, oh yeah, I so Jamie. I feel like I feel like Jamie made me. Um, it made me sad for Jamie. Yeah. Like whatever he's living. In it sounded to me like he was a stay at home dad. It sounded to me like, um, you know, he's like a full time dad because he was just like talking about being a dad and doing dad stuff. And it's crazy because Jamie in the show had like just graduated from Cornell, like he was an Ivy League bro dude. Yeah. And then his life, I don't think, panned out for him the way that he was expecting it to. So I don't know something about Jamie even tolerating some of the shit that Julie was doing to me felt like maybe he like didn't feel secure enough in himself to shut it down a little bit, like, or be more vocally shutting it down. Or maybe he enjoyed the fact that this crazy ass chick was doing. I don't think he enjoyed it at all. I think he's, I think at his core, he's just a really nice guy. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and it surprised me because I, I think I had, um, what I remembered of him was like this Ivy League, you know, finance bro type yeah. of thing also, right? Which is like its own like little box that you put people in or whatever. But yeah. Um, and it seemed like he'd gone through some shit like within the last 15 years or whatever. So I, I hope he's doing better. He just seems like a really nice guy. He did. Yeah. 
I love that he's always wearing his head like his headphones. Have you yeah. seen that around his neck? Mm-hmm. I had a whole category called like best accessory, and they're all just like Janie things. Why aren't you going through your agenda? Well, I don't know because somebody was talking about people buying houses at some point. Okay, that was like thirty <laughs> seconds ago. Okay, no, no, that's fine. What's your what's... my favorite? Ex- I have uh, my favorite accessory was the way that Melissa pulled out that fan when she was talking to. <laughs> <laughs> she started fanning herself during the race. Where did it even come from? Amazing. <laughs> um, my least favorite accessory was um, everything that Julie was wearing. Her yoga pants. Her yoga pants. Her doing yoga by the stairs. Like she was doing yoga right at the bottom of the stairs. Who does yoga at the bottom of the stairs except for somebody who wants people to see them doing yoga at the bottom of the fucking stairs? Yes. <laughs> um, I really like the Tokyo Sergeant Pepper jacket also. Yeah, I thought you would jackets. like that. You look great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a bunch of other Jamie stuff. Jamie's hat, Jamie's VR set, Jamie's headphones. I have Paul's Eiffel Corsi necklace on there. <laughs> Um, don't you think that um, don't you think that Julie's husband Spencer was like a weird guy I think they watch yeah it's like uh, I don't want to comment on uh, yeah he's weird they both do <laughs> they watch what they watch like porn together oh yeah 100% yeah she's like he's got really good porn yeah it was so weird it was like oh, you don't you don't say that to your husband about a guy that you used to hook up with Except yeah. to make him jealous. Yeah. And then even her being like, oh, he sent me this long message and he gave me a hall pass and it's such a sweet gesture, all that stuff. I'm like, I don't think he did. I don't think he gave you a hall pass. I don't know. You know, we think we haven't we haven't talked enough about Danny. Okay. I love him. What a what a beautiful man. You know, what he a... looked like um if Justin Timberlake's first album had not hit, right? And he was just Justin Timberlake ex-member of NSYNC. Mm-hmm. That is what I think Danny looked like. Although I think he look, he's a better looking version of Justin Timberlake. Yeah. I mean, you know, I Justin Timberlake probably got hair plugged at some point. He's and he's got like... Per- oh yeah, I'm sure. And like he's probably got like personal trainers and he's got... Like of course, clothes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So I think uh, yeah. that's what Danny reminded me of. Yeah. I mean, Danny is... Danny um, annoyed me at some points. Um, like... When Danny was when Danny says that Tokyo was impatient and violent, I was like, "You want to take that back, Danny?" Yeah. Um, which was crazy, but I but also Danny was you know fully correcting himself as he was going along, which is yeah. important, right? Um, but Danny even talking about the fact that like he had so much pressure being the face of something that he wasn't ready to be a face of, right? Or yeah. holding on to a relationship because he knew that it meant a lot to a lot of other people for him to be uh, the face of don't ask, don't tell, or even the face of young gay, gay people in media. Yeah. Like that is, it's so crazy because we know now, right? Like that social media, people on social media now will like even influencers will they make a whole fucking vlog about how they're depressed. I'm not saying that they're not depressed when they make those vlogs, but we know that there's there is like a direct correlation between, you know, living life on the internet or being the face of something or being a celebrity and mental health issues, right? Because you go you you are you are literally handed the world in your hands and then you realize that that's not actually what's making you happy because you've never explored yourself or found ways to like make yourself happy. And then just Danny talking about it was really important. Like, I hope that like, if you're, if somebody was a young person that's watching it, that has, that is trying to be famous, that they would understand that like, this is the price that you have to pay. And then him ultimately just deciding to like get a cabin in the woods and be like, I live a very secluded life. I have a daughter. I don't want any of this. I love the way that he explains stuff. Yeah. Because he kind of talks. Like this? Yeah. yeah. It's just very... very it's almost like he's that. figuring it out as he's talking about it so that yeah. you can give him some grace if he makes any mistakes when he's explaining yeah. himself, which is really nice. Yeah, he just I like... Wanna, I want to hang out with him. I want to hang out with Danny. 
I obviously mm-hmm. want to hang out with Melissa. Did we talk enough about Melissa? What's there to talk about besides the fact that she's one of the most captivating people on television that I've ever seen? That hasn't changed and that's in 20 the thing. years. Like, I hope this experience was better for her than the last one where she, yeah. you know, like for her sake. Yeah. Because um, if she, you know, if she turns it on and wants to be entertaining, mm-hmm. she's aces. Like the most entertaining person in the world. She is but the most entertaining person. She's so and, smart. And she was like 22 years ahead of everyone else. Right? Yes. All and of the stuff crazy. that she's talking about. The fact that she's talking about white privilege. like, And it's crazy, right? Because now, to me, I'm like, yeah, obviously those things are accurate. But I can, I can remember myself at that age not understanding what any of these concepts meant. Well, they also did her dirty. Like they didn't, they didn't show. They didn't show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They didn't show a lot of those conversations because, like, I don't think MTV knew what to do with it because I don't think MTV themselves understood those concepts. They didn't understand what those things meant to them. It just seemed combative and pointless or too, you know, political to talk about those types of things when. Melissa was talking about things and, and you know to us we think that she was ahead of her time but the fact of the matter is that black people have understood these things for a long time it's been their di- entire existence like real world New York like you we've been texting about it a little bit but like you know Kevin Powell what he says race plus power equals racism that is like back then I do remember watching it and being like well this guy's a lot but like yeah. now watching, I'm like, oh my god, he was completely fucking accurate about everything in 1992, and here I'm in 2022, being like, obviously, yeah, that's correct. But like nobody understood what he was trying to say because of the way that he was painted. Exactly, and I don't know if it's the way that he was, you know, that they were painted at that point, or whether you know, like I was 17 when this original uh, New Orleans came out, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I was just like, hey, I want to be entertained. So whenever somebody was being serious about race or whatever, I'd be like, ah, I'm not being entertained. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I definitely don't don't think for me it was that. I just think that <laughs> I always uh, wanted no, to have I... controversial conversations. <laughs> no, I'm just saying <laughs> like, I know for myself that in back then, like 20 years ago, even 10 years ago, I, 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 had I would I would I believe that I as a person of color or as an immigrant or as a woman needed to exist in a world taking up and as much space and taking away as much attention taking as much taking up as as little attention as possible right like I knew that I should I went into the world being like I shouldn't be the main character ever mm-hmm it's not my right to be a main character. Maybe I didn't say it was my right to, but I just assumed that the main character was never a possibility for me and that even getting up on stage was not a possibility for me. Like I, I just always, it sounds so fucked up, but like without no, without calling it white supremacy, I guess I just, knew that the world was more centered for white people and not for me. Now, did you think it was the world or did you think it was this country? This country. Which was our world. Which was our world. Yeah. I mean, and when you think about like media and representation and all that stuff, it all comes from America. It was never, yeah, it was never for me. Right. I knew that this world was not for me. So, when you would see these white people on TV having these conversations with black people, somewhere in my mind, I was like, oh, well, the white person is trying. Yeah. Give them some grace. Yeah. You know, they're working on it. Why is this person so angry? What's the big yeah. deal? They're trying, right? Like that, I mean, I would say that maybe that's how you feel about Matt. But <laughs> I'm saying like- that's not That is unfair. <laughs> No, but I'm saying like, you know, I I existed in a world where I always knew that the main character was the white person. Mm -hmm. I always thought of people of color as the, you know, the, well, what's the term? 
not the main supporting uh, supporting role. Yeah. Yeah. The side. So I, I wonder if my if my view of that was different because of how much sports I watched in like hmm. those first five, six years in America. Yeah, it's possible. Because I was I never, you know, uh, to me even back then, like the coolest people that I knew or that that I saw were always black people. Yeah, athletes, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then but I mean in terms of movies and stuff like that, it was always like, yeah, I mean the white guy is gonna be the main here or whatever. Yeah, the white guy is gonna be the main and you know, I knew that I was like not as pretty or not as desirable because I was not a thin, tall white woman. No, I think in general you're not <laughs> even for brown people. <laughs> <laughs> That's something um, we can all agree on. Let's bring Matt on. <laughs> Crisis King, you are unattractive. <laughs> you know, I didn't think Catholics were that strict. I didn't think he was Catholic before, but I, he gives he is. he's he I yeah, but he's like an evangelical Catholic. I've never met a Catholic that that's hard. We live in New Jersey. It's Catholic City over here. <clears throat> I have never met a Catholic like that. He's very intense. He's very. I, I think he mentions that also. Yeah, he says something I'm about not, like, oh, I'm, like uh, yeah. you know, birth control is not allowed, which a lot of you know, a lot of Catholics like are loose on that. I was like, yeah. okay, but he isn't. <sighs> but I respect the guy. No, it's fine. You can have as many babies as you want. That's fine. But you know, I don't know. He gave me the creeps. Oh. Gave me the creeps. Okay. I think I think Matt is at his core is a is kind of a lovely person, and I think no, he seemed like somebody who, if he was inconvenienced, would pop off on you. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe no, no, he would he would cuss you out with a smile on his face, and I don't know if that's nice. I don't think he cusses. He doesn't say bad words. I don't know. He's he. mm, I don't know. He just say bless you very hard. No, I I don't like it. Uh I don't like it. And especially, people, you know why? Watch you know why? Because a lot of the things that he was saying, like in that behind the scenes book or whatever that they wrote, he was really mean about people. And I feel I, like Matt's not, he's not. Um, like he was also 19 years old when that book came out. Come on, man. Yeah, fine. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, fine. You're Matt's number one fan. Okay. I'm a type of asshole and you're Matt's number one fan. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we got to wrap this up. Degrees is canceled because he's saying <laughs> Una Noche. <laughs> that was was that the video yeah. that uh, his future wife was Doritos in? Doritos Girl? No, it was not the one. Oh, that was Doritos, Doritos Girl. What's her name? Ellie Larder? Ellie, Ellie Larder? Ellie no. Larder was, I think, the Varsity Blues Girl. Ellie yeah. Landry? Ellie Landry. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. You know, Ellie Landry, Catholic. Okay. <laughs> I do feel now. I hey, don't she's care. From, she's from Louisiana. Okay. And she was Miss Teen Louisiana. Yeah, of course I know that. And we were just talking about the answer that you gave. That she was Miss Teen South Carolina. <laughs> it all comes full. It's not really a full circle. It's like a jagged, like, rough circle that Noah made. <laughs> um, I anyway. Think, uh, this we gotta wrap an this hour and a half. Hour. Yeah, we got to wrap this episode up. Buddy, I have I have a meeting at eight a.m. This is I fun. have off tomorrow because it's Juneteenth. Ah, oh. yeah, support black businesses. Are you going to support any black businesses? Yeah, I might. It's a very non-committal answer, but okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I might. Okay, I'm going to try to. I don't know what my plan is for tomorrow, but perhaps I will. Um. Okay. Uh. Quick reminder, we have our first Google Meet this Thursday. Um, if you support us on that Google, on the Patreon and the uh, Google Meet level, we have our... Is this very- a trivia thing? Yes, it is. You have not prepared for it, but you're going to... I'm going to help you work on it. Uh, we're doing a trivia. It's all about Tom's. It's that's the 23rd? Mm-hmm. I have something else on the 23rd. Oh, that's too bad. You're going to have to cancel those other plans. I just realized it's a work meeting. So fuck that. Fuck that work meeting. I got to make Tom puns. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Exactly.
exactly. So, um, and message us if you can't find the link, but we'll share that out again. Uh, probably on Thursday morning, we'll send you a note. So if you support us there, please uh, do join us. Um, and we hope to see you there. And I really hope everybody watches this show. Yeah. Okay. I think they got it. We talked about it for an hour and a half. So if you've listened to it this far, I'm pretty sure they've watched it. Bye.